welcome to my channel if you're new welcome back if you're back um i'm super excited this is gonna be my first ever like vlog type video um so i'm going on a little trip with my boyfriend i don't think he's gonna be very much in the blog be vlog because he's not like super um interested in like being on camera type of thing a little bit shy um but um our first stop is we're gonna go get um some stuff at the vet and then after that vegan pastries maybe hopefully fingers crossed and um then we're gonna go to my parents house so um i'll probably spare you the vet visit because it's just picking up some supplies but let's get into it bye lemon we'll see you soon have a nice nap bye bye looney tunes i'll see you very soon okay be good <laughs> so our first stop was the vegan pastry place and they have the cutest mural on the wall I thought I just should take a picture of it and insert it here because it's so cute and there's a picture of me and the baby um, We ended up getting such good food. I was losing my freaking mind you guys um, We got these vegan like pigs in a blanket um, And we had them with mustard. It was delicious and we also had these London fog cookies the almond paste croissants literally I am like they're my new lifeblood i am gonna get them all the time every time i go to the thrift store because this is actually really close to the thrift store which we ended up going um as well as the chocolate hazelnut croissants you guys yeah gosh i love vegan cafes there's something else we decided to drop stop at the thrift store so we're here to do a little quick check if there's anything cool we'll see you guys soon so I found these like screen printed steampunk leggings <laughs> that were pretty fun but I ended up not getting them because it's a lot of brown and I don't wear a lot of brown and also Kate just thought they were really cheesy but I think they're cool so whatever. Um, I also found these leather kind of PVC looking pants uh, but they were too big for me but gosh what a fun material. Um, I always check the doll section unfortunately. There was just like a fakey Draculaura, maybe? We did end up getting one thing, well technically two things because they're a set, uh, but they're for our new place. They're salt and pepper shakers and they're just like these adorable little kitties. One of them being look after um, the garden and check on the garden and the mushrooms and the other one was to check on the kitty cats and also make sure that they are getting fed. Oh, there's beautiful boy Braveheart. Hi guys! This is Angel. She's Braveheart's mom. Braveheart's the orange boy and Angel's the brown tabby and they're both real angels. Real life angels with the purriest purrs. Braveheart was born in 2005, so Angel must be like 16 or 17, and Braveheart's around 15 or 16. Angel had her kittens uh, pretty young, but I remember they were born in 2005 on Canada Day, and Braveheart's a million times bigger than his mommy, because when we first got Angel, we actually let my friend look after her for the first period of her life, and my friend was just not feeding her even though she was a kitten so she always stayed really really small um, and then when we when she had her kittens um, we were like feeding them a lot and stuff so all her kittens were a million times bigger than her that's why Braveheart is like this big beautiful boy like if you look at my size of like my hand to his head he's still a very active wonderful mouser and Angel is just like the sweetest girl in the world she's so snuggly she purrs all the time. She loves wet food. When she eats wet food, she just like does not stop purring. It's the cutest thing in the world. Oh, belly girl. Belly baby. They're just such cuties. I love them. I miss these guys. I wished I could have taken them um, like to university with me or when I moved. 
with me but we already had cats and these guys are just like used to living out here i mean we could go into the politics of outdoor versus indoor cats i'm like very much an only keep your cats indoor person uh but these are technically my parents cats and i don't really have any say um but they're just oh my god i'm obsessed with them we'll give angie a good snack soon actually we'll give both of them a good snack and some hemp seed oil yeah do you like that Basically, Angel's a little older, so we grind up her dry food and then we also give her wet food. But since my parents haven't been home, they haven't been able to give her any wet food. So that's why I'm here to um, give her some wet food as well as like her little hemp um, supplement, hemp oil, CBD for pets. So let's just get her food and medicine started and I'm sure she'll be super happy. So I've collected Miss Angel and she is just the purriest, sweetest little lady, you guys. I can't believe it. I love how purry this sweet boy is. Mr. B! Braveheart's such a sweet, sweet guy. And he's got the best primordial pouch in the world, you guys. Like, holy cow. Look at this little tumby. Look at this tum! Oh my god, and look at this face. What a handsome man he is. Oh, Mr. B, I missed you. Braveheart was named by my brother. He's named after the movie. Uh, my brother was really into it back in 2005, I guess. <laughs> parents like I grew up with very artsy parents so they have a lot of sculptures that they made around this is one of the more recent ones that I'm really into it's like a scarecrow man and uh, my dad also carved this like lotus flower thingy um, it's really cool because it actually floats on water um, so there's a like pond really close to our house um, and you can bring like a canoe down to it and like put this out on the water at nighttime and it's just like the most beautiful thing. I tried to, I asked Cage if he wanted to canoe later and I think he said yes, so that'll be really cool. We have a couple other fun characters, like um, I think it's called a heron. This heron lives here that my dad carved. He's like a woodworker. He built like the house that I grew up in and like, like this house behind us that you see. Um, and like he's always done lots of like interesting sculptures and stuff, but he also does like plumbing and electrician and like kind of all those things but my favorite stuff of his is like I don't know the cool sculptures I think are always really fun my mom likes to plant little trees and things around so we have this little pine that's growing up she also likes to collect weird pieces of like wood from around the forest so we have lots of interesting root systems and stuff that I've always grown up having in the yard and stuff a fun other one that they made, or that my dad made, was this kind of ox head creature, but it's made out of wood, obviously, and like copper. Um, I really like it because it reminds me of taxidermy, but without <laughs> the dead animal part. Um, and also, my parents are really into like Burning Man and festivals and stuff, so um, a while ago, they built this bee temple for Burning Man that got like burnt down, but they kept some of the bees that they made from it. So this is one of them. It's pretty cool. Um, we have another one up here. And um, you know what's fun? When I was um, like in high school, there was this whole like take your kid to work day sort of thing. Um, and both my parents have pretty un unconventional jobs. Like my mom just kind of the, or my mom kind of did the bed and breakfast thing when I was growing up and uh, my dad just like built weird stuff. So for my take your kid to work day, I asked if I could just like build something cool with my dad. And what we ended up building together, well, like he helped me do it, but like we welded this um, kind of chandelier -y thing out of old, like you can see there's railroad spikes on it. Um, and other like kind of pieces of junk metals like pieces of hose and I think the inner thing is like I think it might be from a tire but I'm not completely sure so oh my god I like literally forgot that we did this when I was like back in must have been 10th grade Ooh, tripping over myself um but it must have been in 10th grade that we made this cool thing and I forgot that it like lives here and that's so cool my all-time favorite dude that my dad has made though is this guy with the septum piercing and the eyebrows I relate to him a lot. I think he's so freaking cool and I just really like this dude. None of these guys have names, but I think they totally could have names. I mean, maybe my parents have names for them. I've never asked. 
But look at this freaking dude. I'm, I'm obsessed with him. He reminds me of like an elephant seal in a cool way. So this is, I mean, my mom does a lot of gardening. So this is just one part of the garden, but this is the first part I'll show you guys. It's super impressive. My mom's so good at gardening. And like, I never inherited that because I am really scared of worms, unfortunately. And it's just really, I think it's hard to be a gardener if you're scared of worms. Uh, but I'm just like really in awe of my mom's gardening skills <laughs> and really excited because she told me to collect whatever my boyfriend and I wanted. And it's like a little freaking paradise in here. I'll show you the greenhouse that they built later and also the beehives are over there. And this is some other stuff, but let's, oops, sorry. <laughs> let's um, get started, I guess, over here. So first, you guys, look at this cabbage. <laughs> like, this is so gorgeous. Look at how enormous and beautiful and just like, how awe-inspiring. <laughs> My like veganness is coming up, but like, oh my gosh. And look at these dill. When I was growing up, my mom would always hang dill in my room to dry out because um, I had the room that was like the highest in the house. So it was the driest and hottest. Um, so I always had these like beautiful dill flowers just like drying over my head and it was so nice. Um, this is celery. I don't like celery, but what a beautiful plant it is though, right? Okay, this is the good stuff. This is where we're gonna get some lettuce to pick. Um, my boyfriend and I really like this super delicious sweet lettuce. I don't know the exact name of it. My mom grows all different sorts of varieties. And we're also hopefully gonna get some peas. I really hope they're ready. Last time I went, there were only three and I ate all of them because I was really hungry, so I didn't bring any home for my boyfriend. <laughs> so hopefully this time um, we can try some together. And, um, and we'll also pick some carrots. These are all the carrots. They are just like super densely populated. So my mom said, be sure to take as many as you like and, and really, really thin out the crops. So let's get picking. So there's a bunch in here, but they're a little awkward to grab. We'll just snip them. And like lots of the peas, they look really early still, um, but there's some really juicy ones. And I'll show you guys the whole harvest of all the peas. Peas are like my favorite, one of my favorite vegetables from my mom's garden. I think they're vegetables, right? Or like legumes. Um, but I like them so much because they taste like candy, like when they're really sweet. Um, I'm also not one of the people that eats the outside. I'm like my boyfriend, I always feel really wasteful because he eats the whole thing and I'm like, oh god, <laughs> like one up, but not in that way, you know what I mean, it's fine. Um, but it's so, it's so exciting to get peas. Um, and then just like pop them open like little green candies. Oh my god, this is a complicated operation. Okay, we'll get two in one. We got him. What? Oh no. Okay. Did you show them the purple? Oh, let's like let's the look different at the ones. Oh, that's a big one. I know. This is the pea haul so far, and my mom also she was like very confused about when these um, flowers started coming out because first the flowers come and then the fruits do, um, and the flowers were purple and she's like that's super weird because normally only like the sweet pea flowers are purple, but then the peas started coming up and they're this crazy dark purple too, like this would be a beautiful hair color, um, but. It's, it's very strange, and um, they're green on the inside. My, my boyfriend found out, oh, there's this one that's like half green, half purple. So like, who knows what's going on with these fellow gardening people. If you actually know stuff, unlike me, who is very ignorant about gardening stuff, um, let us know what's up with the purple, with the purple peas. Okay, and now it's time for carrots. So, these are all the carrots. They're super densely populated in here. Um, so normally I try to look if I can find like an orange head popping out, but I think I grabbed most of those ones last time. So let's just, let's just try for when we find like big. So let's see. Ooh, look at this beautiful boy. He will so, be so handsome when he's all scrubbed. Look at these little fibers. And this is so densely populated, we need to thin this out, so let's grab. Whoa! A nice curvy one. Okay, let's go in here. On this side. Ooh! I have a feeling about you. Look at these gorgeous carrots, you guys. Sorry, let me put them in the basket. That's why I grabbed the basket in the first place. Mm. Whoa, that one, I can see him coming out. Oh, he's a baby, though! Sometimes the orange tops end up being just like little babies. And that's okay, too, because the little babies are so sweet and delicious. Um, let's grab a couple more. Nice. 
These would be amazing in like a stir fry or just like in some fresh hummus. Like if you mix up some chickpeas with lemon and tahini. Oh my gosh. KJ and I will probably have to be doing that soon. Hummus is, oh no, hummus is so good. I, oh. It's so sad when you break the thing, then you have to yoink it with your fingers. And then for people like me who are scared of worms, it's a terror. It's a big one though. <laughs> Sorry. There he is, stemless, because I was too rough. But look, carrot hole. Okay, do you want to pick? Yeah. Okay, and now it's time for the lettuce, which is Cage's favorite, because he likes to put it in a lot of sandwiches. And I am not as much of a lettuce eater as I should be. Um, like I know a lot of vegans are really into salads. The only time that I'm really excited about salad is when I make I hate saying this out loud because it sounds like something it shouldn't, but the glory bowl dressing, like the white water, I feel like that's a thing that lots of vegans know about. It's the one with like sesame and tahini and um, nutritional yeast and soy sauce. And it's so freaking good. Um, it's like an amazing dressing for like salads and um, like shredded veggies and like stuff like that. So that's the only one that like makes me really excited for, um, for salad and um, I'll definitely link the recipe below if you are interested and want to try it maybe I'll do a video of it um, sometime because it's seriously like so underrated like it a lot of vegans know about it but if you're not vegan maybe and you don't know about glory bowl salad dressing it's really good um, I used to work at a really cute vegan cafe and we made like all these different salad bowls and the favorite and my favorite one there was that one and I had like shredded beets and shredded carrots and like fresh lettuce and um, like little tiny tomatoes. Tiny tomatoes are my favorite freaking thing. They are also one of those veggies, or well, I guess they're a fruit, but they're also one of those fruits that just feel like candy to me. And I'm really excited because um, when I checked on my mom's tomatoes, there are actually two that are ready. And I, oh my God, I can't wait. Like fresh garden tomatoes are another freaking thing, you guys, like they're, they're a trip. I like talk to some guy at the vegan bakery we went to today that was all like, I eat so much fruit that I don't, like, I all these things at the bakery are too sweet for me because I just eat so much fruit and like whatever and natural sugars and I was like, I don't know why you're flexing to me about like your your fruit intake, like good for you I guess, but, um, but then I eat like little tiny cherry tomatoes and peas and it like, I, they do feel like candy, like I get it. Um, but that doesn't mean that like, croissants are then too too rich for me at least at least in my opinion like me and cage had those sausage rolls and they were the best thing ever and the guy was like they're so greasy and like blah 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 but it's just because he eats too much fruit i guess okay that's the lettuce this is our little our little haul so far we'll wash everything really well um but i'm so excited okay let's just really quickly look at this this is a Brussels sprout plant. Look how beautiful. If you don't know what Brussels sprouts grow like, they grow in the most beautiful, intricate geometric pattern. And the leaves are just so wonderful and lush. It looks like a little fantasy land in there. Like minus all the weird tubing and netting, but it's so cool. Um, my parents did build these like little kind of mini greenhouse situations and they're super cute. I think that might be baby spinach, but it looks a little too baby for mm -hmm. us to pick yet. So we'll leave tiny. it alone. Um, do you guys want to check out the greenhouse? Okay. Oh, those are sweet peas, I think. Do they smell? No, they don't smell like anything. <laughs> okay. That's the greenhouse. And I think my dad built it in 2017. Oh my God, it's so hot in here. You can feel the humidity coming off all the plants. But it's just like a beautiful little paradise. Holy cow, you guys. I'm just gonna open it on all sides because that's the easiest way to collect stuff from it. Okay. Can you pause it? Greenhouse. Um, this is where the tomatoes are. They're super beautiful and like look at how they're growing in like a little line from like biggest to smallest. I could cry. It's so cute, uh, but they're not ready yet. So we won't grab any of these, but there are some near the front entrance that are ready. However, this basil is so fragrant and just like i am so excited to put this in some pesto pasta something like that definitely even if we just like sprinkle some fresh basil on top and i believe my mom told me to just grab like the whole top of the basil piece so we'll do that little guy now that's actually probably enough that's like a good amount good chunk of basil in 
into the container he goes. More basil over here, more tomatoes over here, and my super beautiful friend, the zucchinis. How exciting. Okay, so these guys are zucchinis, and these are zucchini flowers, and my absolute favorite um, thing, my, my and my brother's favorite food that my mom would make when we were kids was fried zucchini flowers, where you take the zucchini flower and like put it in batter and then fry it, and it was the best thing ever, and she made them for me recently when I like went down to visit. That one looks not quite ready, but I see that there's a bunch on the other side that are and potentially in here, no. Okay, let's go to the other side for zucchini flowers, or zucchinis. This one is like a straight up Cinderella pumpkin situation. Um, and this looks like a female plant because it only has flowers. Super cool. Um, aha! There's a beautiful boy. Ooh, I see two beautiful boys. Okay. Sorry, flower. You will come with us too. Look at this. He's like so beautiful and fuzzy. In he goes. And your friend is coming with us. Here's our other friend with his little hat. Ooh, that's a big one, you guys. I see two really big ones in this plant. So we've got this friend. And this friend, and then we'll leave the other one because the other one still has some time. Oh, I can't see what I'm doing on this side. There we go. Sorry if I mauled that plant in the process. Did I? I think you're good. Okay. <laughs> and these tomatoes are still green. And this is the cucumber plant whose fruit is apparently very hidden. So I'm not sure where I should be looking for it, but my mom did say that it might be ready soon. Whoa, these are Whoa. some fun things that come off it, like tendrils, and it smells really nice too. And like, look at this little curl. It's like a fern. It's a nice curl. This is so beautiful. Um, I don't know, Mr. Cuke. I would think he would grow under the flowers. No cucumber for today. Let's close up the greenhouse. And while I'm here, I want to show you guys one of my absolute favorite plants. It's called yarrow. And it's this one down here. Um, this is one of my favorite smells in the whole world. Um, it's like a really soft plant and you can also drink it in tea and it can help a lot with like menstrual cramps and that kind of thing. Um, it's like super soft, just super delicate and has just like the most amazing earthy smell. Uh, I love to like dry it out and just like have it in my room. Um, I used to have it all the time when I lived down here, um, but it doesn't grow as much in the city or as cleanly in the city, but it's just like so nice to be here and to um, see my friend again, you know? And me and Cage aren't a big fan of chards, but there are a bunch of chards and these beautiful little daisy type flowers in here. And then in here we've got more carrots and more big leafy greens. Um, these are old like tractor wagon wheel kind of things that my mom uses as these big planters. And we've got more lettuce and more daisies and flowers and dill. Maybe, I'm not really sure what that is actually. And over here, this massive plant. I don't know what it is, but it looks very happy, so that's exciting. And there's little bees buzzing around the garden. That's always beautiful to see. I don't know if you can hear them in the background, but I will show you the beehive soon. Um, over here, we have this really cool growing lettuce piece and then a bunch of kale, which my boyfriend loves because he likes to make kale chips. And um, maybe we'll try to make some with like some really chunky cashew cheese soon. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, we'll pick some kale soon. And then also over here, this is fireweed. Um, it starts turning red when the summer is starting to end. It's one of my favorite plants. It's really beautiful. Um, you can chew it um, and use it in tea and stuff. And it's a really nice one. Um, my mom and I, when I was a kid, did this whole like medicinal and like edible plants of Canada course. And it was really cool. And I still um, can remember some of the stuff that I learned in that course, even though it was so long ago. Um, so that's really fun. Over here, um, I'm not ooh, not super sure what a lot of these plants are, but I know they're super beautiful. And there's this strawberry plant down here. Oh my gosh, you guys, there's little fresh strawberries. Look at this. This one's for sure ready. This one needs a little while longer. I think there's just the one, 
but let's pick it you guys oh how exciting i love strawberries i'm so excited for when um the summer comes to an end and all the little strawberries start coming out like the wild ones those ones are my absolute favorite and there's an asparagus growing who's ready to go it's this guy so we can pick him how exciting i'm really delighted to have this asparagus fried tonight my mom said he's gonna be so good she was really looking forward to me having him so let's cut him <laughs> look at this color you guys it's like the most beautiful purpley green in the world plants are just gorgeous everyone i mean i think y'all know that but wow Wow! So in the garden at the end of where this big stretch of plants are is where my parents keep their beehives and a bunch of them swarmed recently and also my friends or my parents friends gave them some beehives to look after so they just have more beehives than they've ever had before like we're, we I was used to growing up with like six tops now we have two four six eight ten like twelve we have double the amount that's wild uh, but my parents as you can tell they really love bright colors and painting stuff so um, all the drawers are really fun and colorful and actually the purple ones I painted when I was like goth and like 13 and my parents told me I could paint my furniture whatever color I wanted I chose that purple so um like this purple that 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 that's 14 year old me's furniture color of choice and now it's my hair color so how fun um let's go visit a beehive and have a little listen to our friends how cool hello friends bees are very important they're a wonderful part of the ecosystem. They're wonderful pollinators. It's very important to support your local beekeepers um, if you have any in your area. Um, I think bees are wonderful little creatures. So are wasps. If you're gonna like comment anything being like, yay for bees, but fuck wasps, like no. Get out of here with that stuff. Wasps are wonderful too. But yeah, little bee friends. Just busy, busy away. And also a thing that my parents were super excited about that they did was that they built um, a place to store all like the honey stuff um, and they built it for free like they didn't spend any money on the materials all of this is recycled wood and recycled nails and recycled door and all that so it's this little shed that they made super cool and how fun is that it's just like at the end of the garden and yeah over here there's the hives and all around where the bees pollinate there's just like so many wild clover and it's like the stuff that smells so fragrant and is so beautiful and purple it's honestly like a paradise when i come to my parents house it's the most gorgeous place and like when i was growing up here i didn't really understand the extent of how lucky i was and how much of a privilege it is to live in like a place that just looks like this and with parents that cultivate this kind of environment with bees and massive gardens and just like a reliance on like home grown food and canning and sustainable living. I just, I didn't realize how lucky I was and it's so wonderful to come back here and, and experience it again. I, I think it's, I think my parents are really, really cool people. Look at this flower. This is such a beautiful flower. Reminds me of shooting stars. They're one of my favorite um, wildflowers that grow in my area. Um, I think these ones are potatoes, but I'm not super sure. And over here, I'm pretty sure these are onions or garlic, but I think they're garlic. And over here we have these beautiful clusters of those like shooting star type flowers. Look how cool that is. Nature is wild. Just all these colors and shapes. Um, and there's also pink, pink clover and white clover and a little pollinator friend. Hello. My parents, or well, my dad made this bench to hang out on in the garden. She's really nice. This is fireweed when it's flowered. That weed that I told you about that's really good in tea. And its flowers look like they're gorgeous. Look at those bees. Oh, and this is what yarrow flowers look like. One of my favorite plants. This is what the flowers look like. The flowers don't smell as good as the um, leaves, in my opinion, but they still look really nice. How do I eat? Mmm. Mmm. I need to have a lift it. I'm like go in. Yeah. Like this. Go to get that. Uh, come over here. These are a little easier. These guys here. Okay. All right. Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's filming? Oh, okay. Um, so here's the beautiful kale, and it's just like so curly and excited to turn into kale chips, I'm sure. Um, so we'll cut him. I think I always see my mom just like cut the whole thing. These ones are kind of sticking out, so it's easier to grab them, and my ring is getting stuck, which is why we don't 
dress up all fashiony when we go gardening for future reference rabbit but you know it's it's I, I like dressing up no matter what which is one of the reasons that I, I felt like I didn't fit in as much with my family because they're all very like campy outdoorsy whatever whatever and I'm very like fashion aesthetics and the music and stuff um, but everyone's super creative and super kind and super lovely so I'm really lucky and I think I do fit in um, with my family even though I look a little different <laughs> Is that enough? Or do you want more? I think that's good. Just a little bit of kale chip? Yeah. Cool. Um, so out in front of like my mom's little like breakfast nook kind of thingy, um, we have her little plant garden. Um, some of them are herbs and some of them are flowers. So we'll start over here with rosemary, which is one of my favorite freaking herbs. Like one of my favorite things to do with it is just put it over the stove and like simmer it so the house smells like rosemary and is all like nice and like kind of damp. Um, that really helps me when I have like a sore throat and that kind of thing. So we'll cup a couple of pieces of rosemary, but it's also just like wonderful in tofu and it's wonderful on potatoes and it smells delicious. I know some people put it in their hair, for like hair benefits, shininess, that kind of thing. Um, we'll probably dry this one out and then um, do something fun with it. And over here we have some sage, which is another one of my favorite herbs. It just like is so soft and the smell is incredible. It's a good one to pair with rosemary. So we'll just grab a little, little couple of pieces, just a few leaves. Go in there. Grab you. Thank you very much, plants. My mom always says it's important to like thank the plants when you're collecting from them. She also likes to ask permission to cut, but you know, uh, these are her beautiful, beautiful flowers that she's growing. I love them, and she loves birds, so she collects lots of birds and has them around. And over here, what I'm so excited about, the tomatoes, the two tomatoes that are ready. It's this one and this one, and I'm so excited. My boyfriend doesn't really like tomatoes, but I love them, so these are all for me. I'm so happy. So we got him, little hat still on, my goodness, what a precious egg. And oh my God, the smell's amazing. Oh my gosh, look how cute these guys are. Look at this little garden hole, friends. Let's go get the mushrooms next, okay? <laughs> so this is where the oyster mushrooms live. And my parents rigged this really cool fog machine kind of system to keep it damp in there. And I'm supposed to, refill up that guy so we'll do him in a minute but first let's check what kind of mushrooms if there are any uh, I mean they're all oyster mushrooms obviously but let's see if there's any that are ready I see one okay so if we look in here this guy is ready um, basically they put um, a bunch of spores into the logs and like sealed them in with wax um, so you have to kind of climb in to see where they are Let's go. Oh, those are some very wet ones. Oh, there's a lot of very wet stuff in here. Okay. Oh, the top is sporing too, I think. That one. Okay guys, so I see this big boy over here. Let's cut him into my hand. <laughs> it's so dangerous. Okay. Woohoo! Look at that! Oh, oyster mushroom man. Uh, let's put you over here. Um, so then I'm going to my mom's little leg more flower garden um, that has a couple of herbs and we're collecting some mint so we can make some mint tea with honey. Um, and this is my favorite kind of mint. She has a bunch of different kinds growing all around, but this one is the best one in my opinion. It tastes really lemony. I'm not sure if it's lemon mint itself. It looks like this. It smells heavenly. I normally don't like mint, um, like not in chewing gum, not um, in toothpaste, not like anything like that. But this mint tea, oh my goodness. I love it. I, it mm, in the summer, especially when you have it iced, um, also lately, since I got that peach syrup, my boyfriend and I have been putting peach syrup in mint tea with green tea as well, and it, what? <laughs> it just makes my life. I'm so clumsy. I'm sorry, you guys. I don't know if I'll cut that part out. Um, oh, 
<laughs> so hard to pick. Okay, and then this guy. This is going to make a delicious bunch of tea. Look at our beautiful harvest. Oh my gosh, I'm so thankful to my mom for having such wonderful gardening skills. So the... Your pants are so loud. <laughs> this is the beautiful like vegetable and fruit and herb and legume haul. We've got our little peas, our wonderful zucchinis, carrots, our tomatoes, our sage is in a little pile right there. We've got our lettuce and our basil here and our strawberry, our beautiful strawberry. I'm so excited for them. And um, the kale, the asparagus, look at that color. And the mint, that's about to be mint tea. So let's make that. So I've got the tea, or <laughs> so I've got the mint all nice and washed and ready to go for the tea. We've got our hot water. Pour it in, let it steep for a while, and we're gonna have the most delicious minty tea with nice fresh honey from the bees. Oh my gosh, how exciting. I wish you guys could smell it. It smells like medicinal in how delicious it is. Like, it just, it smells good for you and fresh and refreshing and the color and the vibrancy of the green. Oh my gosh, I wanna live in a teapot of mint tea. Could you imagine being in there? Looks so nice. And while I'm here, I'll show you guys this countertop that's actually really cool because all of these cut open stones that you see are ones that my parents actually found on their little travels um, because when they first met, um, they were both really into their motorbikes and were going on like little uh, bike trips all around, um, traveling and stuff. Um, so these are stones that they got when they were like younger and traveling and like how cool is that? And then my, because they had this big collection of them and they weren't sure um, where they'd put them and then my dad decided to put them into this countertop. Um, so it's really cool. So the kitchen countertop that I just made um, the tea on, I just I just figured I'd show you guys because it's, it's a really neat concept. Um, so now the tea has been steeping for enough time. You can see it over here. This is our tea. Just push the top down. And I made one cup with ice and one cup just for me, regular hot. Uh, you can see it has a really subtle green color. Oh, I'm so excited for this tea, you guys. I wish I could like share some with all of you. I'm worried it'll melt all the ice in two seconds. So some other cool things about my parents' deck, um, my dad did this like kind of mosaic looking thing on the outside and they have this little vintage -y pizza oven looking guy that's super super cute or maybe it's just a regular oven but it's adorable. And my mom is really fond of painting so and she also likes to upcycle old furniture. So she did this set with this sunflower and it just reminds me of Van Gogh and I love it so much. She also did this one. And she painted this. I think this used to be like outside our garden when I was a kid and I've always really loved this thing. Um, and then up here, this is a beautiful stone kind of um, Santa guy that my dad carved out of stone. I love him so much. And here's another fun creature. This one's a bird. I love them. They're so, so cool. Whoa! Sorry, <laughs> I like knocked my head into the wind chimes. There's wind chimes here. And then there's these ones as well. So there's a lot of wind chimes around. Um, and then there's this that I love so much. It's a picture of the green man and it says, living in harmony with nature, we heal the earth. And I think it's a beautiful piece and a beautiful message. So um, yeah, just some cool little things I thought would be fun to show. So this is my mom's like flower and herb garden. Always like bees buzzing around. Look at these flowers. This is the color that I would love my hair to be. It's so vibrant and beautiful <laughs> and just absolutely gorgeous. I don't know the names of any of these, but look how 
freaking incredible they are. My mom also has this beautiful little like kind of garden fairy down there. You can always hear sparrows because there's a bunch of them living um, all around our house because my parents built all these sparrow boxes. Um, and my boyfriend and I actually got to decorate some because my parents invited us over to do a little bit of sparrow box decorating. And um, I'll, I'll try to show you guys them if, if I remember where we put them because there's so many sparrow boxes. Um, I love these purple flowers. I think these ones are my mom's favorites. And I can see why the color intricacies and just like the pastels and the brights and just like the whole formation is incredible. These ones are amazing. They're like wine red and just like so freaking pretty. Over here are some other really pretty ones. Super tall. And these are some of my favorites. I think these ones might be called lamb's ears. Either way, they're so soft. And they just remind me of my cats, um, like the inside of their ears in a really nice way. And they're so, I don't know, they kind of remind me of sage as well. <laughs> And they're just very, they have a very peaceful energy. This color, um, I remember when I was really into like looking up goth stuff and whatever, there was this idea of like moonlight gardens where like all the plants are like silvery and blue and there's like lots of them that bloom um, at night and things like that. And um, if I ever had a moonlight garden, I would definitely plant some of these <laughs> as well as like silver berries, bushes. I think those would be incredible. There's these and a little bee friend, hard at work pollinating. There's these, and lots of times hummingbirds will come and hang out at this little hummingbird feeder that my mom has set up. Yeah! Okay, we, it happened, it wasn't the worst. There's some mint down here, this is the same one that my boyfriend and I collected for our tea. I think these might be marigolds. Um, cool lantern, different flowers. And, oh, this part's my favorite as well. These really silvery plants. Gorgeous. And then there's a ton of succulents that I just think are the neatest thing. And lots of antlers that my parents have found around. And a bunch of my mom's, like, stone collections that she's found and stuff. These are more succulents. I love succulents. I love that you can have succulents in a garden outside. Oh, these birds flipping and flopping around. I think this might be wild garlic. It's super pretty. And these are chives, for sure. I know that one. There's some huge rhubarbs. Oh my gosh. This rhubarb? Look at the size of my hand to this rhubarb leaf. That's wild. Ooh, let's go look at these. They look like orange. These tiger lilies. Ah! Oh my god, I'm like right in front of this sprinkler. Holy sh Look at these ones, you guys. These are incredible. These feel so tropical. Oh my goodness. Look at this color. I can just picture like a hummingbird on this in a postcard. Oh my goodness. These ones also look gorgeous. Remind me of hibiscus, you know? And here's rhubarb. My boyfriend just asked me to cut him a piece of. So, let's find one. Um, you look good. Okay. Got this friend for my love. And, oh, let's go look at the other side of the garden. So many cool pieces of driftwood and stuff as well that my mom hangs around and I just love it. So many purple flowers. I can't believe it. Wow! Oh my god, if I could stop. So, that's this garden area that I wanted to show you guys. It's just super lovely. Um, I think my mom's a really wonderful gardener. And I just think it's really cool. And now I'm walking to, to meet my boyfriend at the lake. Kind of thingy. There's a really cool mini island in the middle. Oh, there's so many butterflies around. I don't know if you can see like any of them on film, but they're very pretty. Every time I go down here, I feel that, like there's millions of dragonflies and butterflies and all that kind of stuff. Um, so this is the pond. There's always like lots of ducks and geese living here and they recently had ducklings like a month ago or so. It's not super recent, but <laughs> it was really cute. Just seeing all the like little fluffy yellow guys. My mom always takes lots of pictures of them. So that was really sweet. And um, when, remember when my parents first moved here, 
Um, it was like very kind of dead looking in the pond. Um, and they put this like wind turbine that um, pumps oxygen into it essentially. And ever since then, there's just been like so much algae growth and like cool little plants in there and like tons of dragonflies and so many more ducks and so many more like, um, what are they called? Uh, they're not beavers muskrats so many more muskrats we did have some beavers a while ago but um but it's just wonderful how um more oxygen in the ecosystem just totally transforms the space i remember learning about it in like bio and university and stuff about like how the trophic layer layers work and stuff i don't know if i'm using that correctly but it's so neat and i just love all the wildflowers there's like daisies and yarrow and just like Lots of thistles as well, which like can hurt, but they have the most beautiful purple flowers. And the breeze is really nice. And these, I don't know what these are called, but when I was a kid, I would like crunch them up with like a little mortar and pestle and like put water with them and like pretend it was coffee for like my, my teddy bears and stuff like that. I don't know, that was <laughs> just a me thing, but it was fun. And these guys are so fun, they're like little birds. I had a pair of earrings that looked a lot like this when I was a kid, they were like, very silicone-y. And look at all these tiny flowers that are growing everywhere. There's also frogs that you can hear at night sometimes, which is wild and really, really cool. And then we've seen, like my boyfriend and I, the last couple times we've been down here, we've seen herons, like these huge, beautiful white bluebirds, just like going to the pond and like swimming around. <laughs> it's really cool. And this what, mint is really wild and or this mint is really delicious. It's wild mint and it grows a lot of it um, on the little island as well and I love it. Like look at the life. All the different like little ecosystems that are like flourishing here. It's so cool. It's like layers and layers of like mossy algae kind of stuff in there and there's probably like so many little fishies and insects and tiny things that live in there so so neat and there's just like beautiful reeds and cattails all this um kind of rock structure that normally has a lot more running water when it after it rains a lot or right now it's pretty empty and here's this little forest trail that we're gonna go into oh my gosh is this butterfly okay Butterfly. I didn't. I didn't realize that it's two butterflies mating. Um, how neat! Nature's wild. <laughs> okay, so in we go in this little forest pathway. Oh, <gasps> no way! Those are strawberries, wild strawberries. Like I said, that it was two early for but it's not oh my god i'm sorry this is so exciting there's so many oh my gosh we have to pick them baby oh my god oh we came just at the right moment this is this is delightful i'm i'm really happy oh my god they're gonna taste so good how are they very yummy oh my god i'm so happy so after a couple of minutes these are all the strawberries i found and i'd show you the ones cage found but he ate them all already which is fine they're delicious i'm really excited to try them now what? Ooh, very beautiful. Good job. And we're just going further up the trail. So many different types of plants. Just like all these different types of ecosystems going. It's a little steep up this way, but it's fine. I used to get to be able to take walks around here like every day after school in high school because my mother, my mom, she was really insistent on the fact that like spending time outside was really important for like mental, physical, emotional health and that kind of thing. Um, so it feels really nice to be back. Remember one of my favorite things to do was getting to take off my shoes and stepping on the moss barefoot. It was so good, especially after it rained and the moss is like extra wet, like a cushion. It's so cool. Um, and my mom put little like trail markers up around so people don't get lost, but you can see where the trail is a little bit. Ahoy. It honestly feels like 
Alice in Wonderland type stuff. And it's so neat because this forest, like any forest, changes all the time with the seasons, but it also stays the same. And it's just so cool to go, like now I feel like I don't see it as much because um, I mostly am in the city, but seeing... Diggles, uh, mushrooms. That's an edible one too, but they're way better when they're um, small. My mom and I used to go mushroom hunting after it rains. There's another one. I forget what they're called, but they're really good fried up with butter. Or vegan butter, but you know what I mean. Um, oh yeah, just that like, um, different forests have like their personalities that change throughout the year. And my favorite time, of course, is the fall. In the forest when the leaves are all brown and everything feels like extra spooky. I remember one fall I found um, a skull from like a coyote or something like and it was very disintegrated and covered in moss and stuff and it was so cool. It just felt like the beautiful most special spooky gift from the forest in the world. Um, it, it, it was really nice. I kept it in a plant pot. I think I still have it at my parents house but I'll have to check. Um, but in the springtime, it's also so beautiful when all the flowers start blooming in here. Now it's like the middle of summer and it's not really like the spring bloom, but there's just so much green and it's so beautiful. These are also really gorgeous little like bluebell type flowers that I love. They're so delicate. They remind me of fairies. So this is a big, big guy. Oh, he's spongy. Can I grab him? I mean... Oh. <laughs> like that, that's good. Yeah, that's the edible one, but you want them to be really small because that's just like gonna be too mature and it's not gonna taste as good as the really young ones. I think it might be a little late for the really young ones, but yeah, spongy mm. texture. So there's like cool spider webs and all just like interesting stuff in the trees. But down here is one of my favorite spots. Um, you can't really see it right now as much because there's not a ton of water. Um, like it's just been really dry because it's the summer. But normally down here is like this like very flowing little stream. And it's just like the coolest place because there's like the water just runs all down here and over the moss and it just gets like so nice and soft and squishy, which I love. And you have to kind of under duck underneath to get down. These like wild, cool mushrooms that are just huge growing around. My mom also likes to hold, have like kind of nature offerings and stuff like that around. Um, so that's why there's this like cool seashell necklace on the tree. I think it was a gift from one of her friends. It's just nice. <laughs> I always like to see that. I don't know, there's something about moss and mushrooms that just gets me, you guys. But also seeing, like, the fallen trees. My mom has been mostly trying to clear them. She, like, puts them in little piles, and then they use them to burn to heat the house because um, they have a wood-burning stove in there. Um, so it's pretty it's pretty neat. And on it, you can see how to find this path up here is where there's, like, less sunlight, so less things can grow because the tree cover is heavier. It's still really beautiful and it's so nice and cool like I feel like if you were like out in the city right now it probably feels like 30 degrees but in here it's just like this beautiful cool almost like oceany feel like it feels damp and I like it oh and there's like a cool fallen over tree it's been fascinated by like when trees fall over and you can see the underside of them you know what I mean I'll show you when we get more up close. When I was a kid, I would play in like the kind of ditch that forms around them, like it was a fort. See this? There's always like a little kind of depression in the ground next to it, and this is like the best fort when you're a kid. So neat. Ooh, this is like a very spooky looking mushroom. I like that. I could make a doll inspired by that mushroom. Okay, now you guys, it's time to show you my absolute favorite part of the forest. My favorite thing at my parents' house, potentially. 
Um, this is one of Cajun Eye's best spots. And um, I don't know, maybe if you live in a climate similar to where I live, you have something similar to this. Or maybe you have a cool piece of nature or maybe you have like a cool special um, place that's like really cool to you that if you want to tell me about it in the comments I would love to hear because I I love hearing details about people's like little magical spaces especially in the wilderness but if it's not in the wilderness that's cool too um, magical spaces can totally exist inside too but um, we're walking into one of my favorites of all time right now and I'm super excited to share it with you it feels like letting everyone in on a little like clubhouse almost so um we're here <laughs> i'll flip the camera around and i'll show you guys all right so my favorite thing in the world basically something which just makes me so happy is these giant patches of horsetail this like green super fluffy um plant that's like really good in tea and stuff but it actually just looks like a green cloud um, it's the coolest thing to lie down in. I feel like it's not picking up on camera the way that it looks in real life. Because in real life it looks like you're standing in the middle of like a swamp. Like grassy, just cool, weird texture stuff. It feels so relaxing and peaceful. You can hear all the birds. It's so cool. This is what it looks like. It's so neat. I can't get over it. Plus the trees make it look so spooky. At nighttime, this is the best stuff ever. Or the best place ever. You know what I mean. I love it. I'm so lucky. <laughs> These plants are really cool because A, they're heart-shaped, but B, when you pick them, this interior part, if you like get this white part inside, it smells like root beer. It's the wildest thing. Yeah, I don't know. It's really interesting. I learned it at camp when I was a kid, but it's like this heart-shaped plant and it smells like root beer on the inside. How mm -hmm. crazy. Then, um, on this side, it's kind of the part where it's like a bed and breakfast, uh, but we're still allowed to like hang out here and walk around, but there's some cool paths, so let me show you guys. I actually helped um, them build um, one of these, like with the, you know, the compost and the wheelbarrows, but they built this little bridge to go over, ah, hi birds, um, to go over this little stream sort of thing, and there's like this fence. It's like wicker and this little path. This is the one that I helped make. Um, so part of it, it starts having um, mulch on it. So that's the part that I helped with. Oh, wait, no. This is a path that never got finished. Where is it? Okay. So let's see if we can find this path. It always takes me a couple tries, but I eventually get it. So let's go on the adventure together, you guys. Um, all right, we found it. <laughs> Ooh, cool bone. Or maybe stick? Cool what? Bone? Stick? Cool what? Bone? Oh, cool bone. Or stick. stick. It's a bone! Looks like a rib cage, maybe. Very cool. Okay, this looks treacherous. Ooh. I'm gonna fall, baby. We did it! And there's some cow parsnip or something. There's a grouse. We don't want to scare her. I'm going to try to be very quiet. But I wonder where she went. There she is. Hi gorgeous. That's so neat. Sorry, we don't mean to scare you. We'll be on our way very soon. 
like a thousand grouse. There's like, another one right there too. There's like a million of them, you guys. Holy hell, and they're super loud. This is where a deer slept, when it's like all squished down like this, it's because a deer slept there. And another one slept there. Like this. We found the path, you can see the mulch underneath, but it's not very well maintained. So let's try to see if we can walk it and not get lost. Oh, okay, you can see it, like, kind of. Wow, it's so overgrown, this is so cool. I love that. Oh, it smells so nice, it smells like clovers. And wildflowers. Like a cool little bot botanical garden walk. I love botanical gardens. I remember I think one of the coolest ones I ever went to um, was in, oh gosh, I don't remember, but it was shaped like a giant um, dome. It was like a geodome. It was somewhere in Canada because I remember I went there with my parents on this like road trip after I graduated school. Because um, I graduated early, which was nice. Um, and I had some extra time because I went to self-directed high school. So that was really cool. I think we're... Okay. Let's go. Can we pass? So, one of the really cool things that they put on this path is this super old rocking chair kind of thing. And it just like looks over this like little pond and there's these massive cow parsnips. And it literally looks like bridge to Terabithia kind of stuff down here. Like, can I... There's like thistles growing, so I don't want to sit down. But like, look at how big the plants are. They're huge. It's wild. They're like as tall as me. And I'm like not super short. <laughs> there's so many wildflowers everywhere here. It's hard to see them like all in frame. But there's like these yellow ones and all these purple ones and white ones and other purple ones and clovers and thistle and yarrow. Just like so much beautiful things, even dandelions. I love these guys. So every year I like to collect a little bouquet of wildflowers um, from the summer or the spring or whenever I get to be down here and then I just like tag, or, like tie them in a bow like with a ribbon and with a little note of what year it was. Um, so I think this vlog today is a great opportunity to get one of my um, you know, 2021 wildflower bouquet started. So I um, guess I'll just do that as, as we walk back. So we've been walking through the wildflower field and so far we've gotten these beautiful guys. I've got clovers and daisies, kind of marigold looking things. Um, I tried to only take flowers from like patches where there was a bunch of them and, um, you know, taking different ones from different pieces, um, you know, responsible gathering. Um, there's so many beautiful flowers around. It literally blows my mind every year. I can't handle it. It's so wonderful. So this is the sparrow house that I built and unfortunately it's super scratched out. You can kind of see hints of old mushrooms and like a sun in the top and like little herbs and stuff. But yeah, very cool little sparrow house. This place is really nostalgic to me, this massive tree. Um, because when I was like, 12 or 13 and I had been into like witchcraft and stuff for a year I decided to do like a solo initiation ceremony to be like officially like um a Wiccan type thing and um I did it here and this place just still feels like a lot of um emotional and spiritual importance for me and it means a lot this be beautiful tree and just yeah it's fun. So this is the collection of wildflowers that I got. Um, it's wonderful. I'm super happy with it. It just feels so full of life and I think it's going to look even cooler when it's all dried and ready to be in my life like forever with all the rest of my little like piles of wildflowers. It's nice. Uh, so Cage and I got really hungry after our walk so we decided to look in the cupboards. We found some pasta, pot, boiling water, salt. And we're making some dinner. So the pasta is boiling and I've acquired um, some toppings. So my boyfriend, he will have pesto in his. 
um, and I got some basil for him. And then for me, I'm gonna melt some earth balance um, with some sage leaves um, and leave them kind of simmering in there so the butter will kind of be a little bit sage infused. And maybe I'll stick a little bit of rosemary in there too. It's gonna be delicious. So this like butter and sage thing, um, my dad would always do it when my mom would make gnocchi when um, I was younger. She still makes gnocchi like my parents do like to make their own pasta sometimes. Um, they're Italian and pasta is a big <laughs> part of their culture and I guess mine by extension theoretically maybe, I don't know. Um, but the butter and sage thing, even though it's earth balance and sage, mm, chef kiss you guys. So I've got the butter melted on the lowest heat and I just washed the sage and there it goes and it can just sit there and kind of infuse and just make this amazing flavor. Ugh, I'm so excited you guys! <laughs> like not too much pasta but I'm super excited for it and I'm gonna put a ton of nutritional yeast on mine and it's gonna taste so good Ugh. also the pesto is homemade by my mom because she's wonderful and um yeah I'm so excited this pesto looks so good this is exactly oh my god pasta is never better than when it's just with like butter and nutritional yeast but with herbs too Ugh. I can't wait we have this beautiful view and I got my lovely my guy and I can't wait Angel loves to sit in baskets, and she just is such a beautiful little grandma. I love her. She's so sweet. Um, well, that was it for our time at my parents' house today. Um, we're just gonna go back home now. It's like 8 p.m. So it's still pretty light out um, But it was so much fun and I hope you guys enjoyed watching I might film a little bit of at-home content, but probably not um, So if this is the last time I see you guys, thank you so so much for watching especially till the end It means a lot and I hope you have a great rest of your day your night your week I hope you're kind to yourself and I hope you do something that makes you happy like give yourself a little treat that will make you smile. It doesn't have to be something big even. Just just do something for yourself. Okay, um, have a good one everyone. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you later. Thanks again. Bye.